Hi, I'm Neil Barker and welcome to my guide on complete strip and reassembly of the iPhone 4. Right, first we go, we start off with our iPhone 4, nice little carbon sticker on the rear there, but uh, apart from that, standard iPhone 4. Um, first thing we come across, obviously, are the little two screws in the bottom. Now the earlier models of the iPhone 4, um, they have the crosshead screwdrivers and the screws in, and that's what we've got here. Um, but the later iPhone 4, and now the iPhone 4S, have the Torx, the sort of the five star, um, the five star screws. So what we can do, I mean, ours is the Philips, so we sell all the tools on our website. Um, so we've got the the sort of the standard Torx, just like the one or two use only ones, and we've got the professional Torx screwdrivers that you can use a lot if you're a repairer or you want to do it more often. And um, obviously these, we've got small Philips screwdrivers as well. Um, the crosshead type. Um, so we remove these two bottom screws and they lift out like so. Um, dead easy to get into, um, but obviously, as you remember, you know, if you've got the torque screws or the Phillips, then get the, the tool to suit. Um, but we do emphasize that on our site. So, right, once that's out, it's dead easy to uh, do. You've got the rear casing, you've got the two screws out there. We're just going to put the thumb on the back, we're just going to push it towards the top. There we go. Comes up by about three or four mil at the top, goes that way, and then what we're looking to do then is just literally lift it this end and it should come off like so. So there you go, there's the uh, rear casing of the iPhone 4 off. There we go, it exposes the internals of the iPhone 4. Obviously it must, it must insist that you turn the whole thing off first before you do anything else um, and you run the sort of the, uh, the standard anti-static uh, requirements before you do it because if you put your fingers in there and you've got static you're going to damage it. So we'll put the parts to one side but that's the rear casing off. So if you're replacing the rear casing, that's it, simple as that. You get the new rear casing, you slide it on and then uh, away you go. I like to use these little trays um, because the screws are so many different sizes um, that you know I, I put them in the compartments as we go and it's so much easier. So there's the iPhone 4, of course you've got the battery there, the camera and all the, sort of the innards and there. So we, first we can start taking out the, all of the parts inside. Um, we can remove the battery first. The battery connector here um, has a small crosshead Phillips screwdriver screw there so we're going to remove that. Um, so that screw comes out like that, I'm going to pop it in that compartment and obviously the battery will come out now. So if the battery's never been out before they're pretty tricky um, and a lot of people make this error of actually tearing the battery connector off the board we've noticed so be really careful. You're looking to get a little non-marking tool, hook it under this little tab there, I don't know if you can see that, under the top edge there. Don't go too far in, you're just looking to just literally half a mil in and just flick the connector up and off like that. Um, any deeper you're into the plastic connector on the board and you ping the connector off the board it's going to need resoldering if you um, so it's a pain so the connector comes up and there you have this small bracket underneath um, which is used to I might have to leave the battery leave that in there to remove the battery but that that's clamps between the battery connector and the the board and clamps the little uh, aerial aerial plug down there it looks like it's coming off so let's remove that um, so we can remove that little that little device there, that puts pressure on that little connector, stops the aerial socket from pinging off. Um, so that's the battery. Um, it's quite tricky. If you've never removed it off before, it's got a little tag here saying, you know, pull here, release the battery. Sometimes it's extremely hard, extremely well stuck down, um, but this has been off before. So we know that a quick pull of that, that'll come off. Um, if all else fails, you get a little spudger tool um, little plastic budget. Again, you can get all these tools from our sites and come in one side and just sort of pry it here um, up this side. Just be careful not to damage the battery because if you split the battery then it's it's no good. So you're looking to lift the battery, maybe a little bit of warmth as well, but you don't want to heat the battery or the phone up too much. So battery comes up like there. Obviously if you're replacing the battery, that's great. All you need to do then is slave the new battery in. There's little bits of sticky pads here that it'll stick down on. Uh, what I'd recommend is, is getting that bracket in first, push the connector on top, and then sit the battery in um, and then obviously put that screw in. So that's the battery out. That leaves you the board. Now if you're doing this full strip down you might as well remove this this because it just gets in the way on everything you're trying to do. That simply pulls off, leaves a bit of adhesive behind so you can just push it back down. That's that out of the way. Um, now we're into sort of more screws. So again all, all crosshead type screws. Uh, next thing we're going to do is remove the dock connector or at least partly, partially, these two screws here. One very small, shallow, with a shallow sort of bevel head on, another one a little bit larger, and then this little bracket lifts off. 
that bracket that bracket clamps down the the sort of dock connector cable stop that from pinging up and what we can do then we can lift that up again get in the corner just just lightly touch it in there go too far and you're into knocking sort of pins off and chips off uh, and that should lift up and then that's stuck down with a little bit of adhesive sort of a, a bonding adhesive it's a case of just literally gently running down the underside of the cable with a little plastic tool just gently peels the adhesive off and the cable should then then literally just lift up at 90 degrees to the board like so now once that's there we can start thinking about taking the screws out for the, the speaker. This is the speaker assembly. Attached to it on the underside is the antenna cable. So we're going to take out these screws, um, put that in the corresponding little tray there, and there's one under here as well that clamps the board and the speaker down. We can pop that one off, and then we're going to remove this little aerial connector again, corner of the little plastic tool, not too much sort of pressure under it, but it's a case of just literally getting under there. It's quite hard to do with a camera in your, in your way. And it's a case of lifting that little connector up. If I lift it up, you might be able to see that a bit better. And I could get it to it, it'd be easier. It's a case of lifting that connector up. There we go. And again, it exposes that little circular connector, both very sort of sensitive. You don't want to end up peening that over, as you'll never get it back on. So that's the uh, that's this assembly sort of pretty much disconnected. We can't take it out until the board's loose, so we'll carry on taking the board out. Uh, next little thing is there's a screw on the board here. Uh, covered by a little sort of white dot which is the the water detector so we can lift the little white dot out of the way put it back you know, just sort of dab it down there it's a bit sticky and then we can remove that crosshead screw there that screw comes out we put it over there to keep it separate um, and the next thing we're into is this black bracket at the top of the phone here and there's a, a sort of myriad of screws here all different sizes uh, to remove that now some people say that's a retaining bracket, some people say that's the actual Wi-Fi antenna and uh, I'm inclined to agree with the fact that it is it's part of the Wi-Fi antenna if you look at the sort of the gubbins underneath it. So we're going to pop these screws out, there's one there, there's a really long screw at the top here. So we're going to undo that. Again these trays are brilliant, uh, just, just keeping them separate. That long screw comes out with a little pair of tweezers, drops into there. Um, really small, really shallow screws, this one here. That comes out just, just to one side. You've got a screw that goes through the board there on that corner, so that comes out. That can go in that little pocket there. And then a very, very shallow screw here. Obviously, sometimes this, that's a habit, it's, it's only through a tiny spigot glued to the board. And even undoing it, un, un, you know, sort of breaks the, the little spigot. Sometimes it's unavoidable. There's not a lot you can do about that. Really small screw there. We can drop that in there. So this bracket is ready to be removed. Um, it hooks, it has a couple of little hooks that hook into the, sort of the bracketry on the main frame there. So we can just get little tweezers, come down the hook and you're looking to pull it down and up and it just comes off nicely. So you pull it down and up and there's your little black bracket, wife air, aerial, whatever you want to call it. It's got little clips and sort of contacts on. So that's that and that exposes all the connectors for the screen, the, head, uh, yeah, the headphone jack the cable for the camera and also the cable for the buttons and everything. So that has got that off. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to come along and we're going to remove the little vibration module. So if you're replacing the vibration module, you don't even need yeah, I don't even know you don't even need to take the bracket or the battery out. Um, you just look into you can do this with it all in, which is quite handy. Two very different size screws again. Um, you can't get them mixed up. One very long and one very short one. Um, they both lift out and then with a little pair of tweezers you remove the little vibration module and then throw it across the table there. The little vibration module comes out. Uh, one thing to note is if you ever disassemble and reassemble, we've noticed that uh, there's a little bit of clear sticky tape on the inside of this headphone jack. If that comes away, that's enough to stop the little vibrating head from moving. So if you get a vibration issue, it's always worth checking that plastic, the little plastic first. And it's, it's not, it's not essential, so you can snip that off and it will allow it to freely. Also, if you don't centralise that properly, and it can go in at a different angle, centralise it, then sometimes the little vibration head can, can hit against the plastic and, and it won't rotate. So there we go, that's the uh, vibration module. Next thing we're going to do, and obviously a lot of people forget about this when they try and move, remove the board, is the SIM card tray. We're going to remove that now. Obviously if you don't remove this, then the board will go nowhere and you could end up breaking the board if you uh, decide to try and force it out, thinking you've got all the screws. So here we go, obviously we've got all the screws out as we go around. Now it's time to release uh, 
all the connections and there's one one sort of turret screw left there again be very careful when releasing these one two three four five connectors um, and we'll also do the camera which is six corner of a little plastic tool be very gentle just try to get the top edge very the minutest edge you can to these and it's just a case of lifting flicking them off being nice and gentle not hooking any chips as you go or anything like that and they, they come off you don't have to force them if you're forcing them then there's something wrong um, you know have a rethink walk away come back if you're losing patience so those and then you come into this one um, that connector there this is the digitizer you're going to look into it just a little bit underneath it again mind the chips underneath maybe put your thumb on the board stop the board from moving and pinging that one off and then the LCD screen comes off there as well just lift those out of the way so you can remove the board and then finally you can take the board out with the camera um, but you might as well remove it while it's there and it's a case of getting the whole flat of the tool underneath this connector and again being very gentle and just literally nudging it and the connector pings there we go and that's the camera and again if you're doing the camera change there we go in fact little trick if you're doing the camera change you don't even need to remove those two I know you've got this little leg here that goes under but you can slide that under and then push it in and the same on the way out so little trick try removing that uh, without taking all that off uh, so that's the camera removed um, so there's the camera replacement if you need be now we've got all those connectors off we've got that little turret screw to remain that's a little flat blade um, screw type if you can see that so we're going to just get in the head of the turret, spin it out, um, and then it should come out just like that. Now what we're left with is, is pretty much everything out. We've got the SIM tray out, we've got the, the board out, and um, it's all ready to go. Now as we lift the board at the bottom, it sort of comes up, kind of comes up that way and then out. So if I can show you that, lift the board up a little bit, minding this cable, minding the uh, little aerial cable as well, lift the board up, up at the bottom, use your finger there, you sort of your index finger, just to pull these connectors back, make sure you don't catch anything, and the board comes away like so. Um, little thing on the board, just thing to note is there's a little rubber, um, a little rubber space there with a slot on it there. Um, sometimes they can they can sort of ping off and disappear, but what happens is they go, it goes in that corner. It just protects the radius from the LCD cable, um, so but it's not stuck down. It just sits there and it has a little flat and the flat goes on the inside because it's it's not you know it's thicker one side underneath than it is the other and that's the board out so obviously to replace the logic board there you have it we can put that to one side now now the speaker assembly is all loose um, obviously it slots under the, the board slots over it so it can't remove until you've got the board out then the speaker assembly with the aerial just comes out and there we go and there's the little sort of the antenna part of it as well this whole back is, is an antenna sticker um, so there you go that's the antenna out Move, to, move that to one side and you're left with the chassis um, with a few cables in uh, right now if you're removing the dock connector then we have a couple of more screws to do uh, obviously it's you've got the dock, the dock connector comes the cable comes down here it's all a one-piece cable and you've got two little screws at the bottom here to remove um, a bit like the 3GS and the 3G really two screws at the bottom they come out and what you're looking to do is obviously the home button comes through through the chassis and and connects there so we're looking to release a little one of the standard sort of apple apple clips with a bezel where you you flick flick the, the bezel up there um, and it releases the cable and then you're just looking a little bit of tweez pair of tweezers just to pull the home button cable out um, it gets quite tricky there you go and then that's that's free now the the cable itself is held down by adhesive so it's a case of lifting it gently from this corner and it should lift out and you, all you've got is the little microphone, the little voice microphone here is that little rubber sleeve there, you can push that out it's like a little spigot that fits into and that whole cable is just just adhesive down and that, that will come out again a bit of warmth won't hurt there you go, off it comes just make sure you're free of the home cable without tearing it and then there's a little bit, the little tab at the end here, where the home button is. Uh, sorry, not the home button. Um, on this end, where the microphone goes into, that's stuck down a little bit as well. So it's quite fiddly, but it does come out. There we go. And there's your dot connector cable, free. And on there, 
obviously the issues you're going to cure is possibly sort of bent pins, um, a little voice microphone problem if you've got it. Sometimes the home the home button doesn't go in there correctly and that stops working. Um, so you've got the, you've got the microphone dock. Um, oh, and there's a little speaker contacts there as well. So that's the uh, that's a little cable out for that. Just to note, obviously, if you're doing the screen, then you don't need to take that out. In fact, you don't need to take anything more than, than this out, apart from if you left that in, then you can remove the screen like that, and I'll show you that in a minute. In fact, we'll go for the screen now. Um, so obviously, yep, yeah, remember, if you're doing the screen, don't take the dot connector out. Now the screen is glued glued down with a diesel at the top, a diesel at the bottom, no no side rails, which is quite good. Uh, and there's, well, there's six, seven, eight, nine, ten screws involved in this. Now the little tweak on these, remove the, the, there's four screws in the corner, uh, all the same size, so we can pull them in one one slot. So and they're all sort of in various positions in the corner, so having a, a sort of a, a longer reach Phillips is, is quite handy. They're all crosshead. You can you can see that at all. So there's two out, then obviously the other two cor two corners. If you can say it's a corner, it's on a radius, but uh, you get you get what I mean. I hope you do. Right, so that's the third one out. And there's one more in this corner radius around whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can even get to this when that dot connector's in, so there's no problem with that. It's just a little bit something else to, to worry about. You don't want to overbend that dot connector cable. Right. Now, you have six screws here. Big screws, big headed screws um, with really big washers. And what happens is, obviously, these, you have to take the screws out, but these, they're just sort of like a like a hook shape, the hook in all six of, you know, six of these. Now a little tweak for this is don't take them all the way out, there's no need, and it, you'll just in, be into a whole whole world of pain trying to get them back in. My little tweak is, undo them about half a turn each. No more, there's no need for any more. Um, half a turn each on those. It, it just loosens them up, but doesn't mean that all the washers fall out, so, and that just, yeah, it just makes it difficult. Especially if you're trying to do them quickly. So right there we have it, we've got the four screws for the corners out and these six screws are literally just backed off half a turn. Now the next thing we're going to do is heat it up. Now we can get a hair dryer or a heat gun just to gently heat up these top and bottom. Uh, the, the, gen, you know, sort of the warmer they get, uh, within reason, the better the screen will just come away and sometimes even leaves the adhesive in place so you don't have to you know, re-adhesive it. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to pop it in our little sort of parts oven that we've got around about 60 degrees for, for a good half an hour. And that just loosens it enough to, um, you know, the adhesive gets heat soaked and it just lifts the screen off. So we'll do that and the screen should come right off. Right, so remove the, uh, the iPhone chassis from the oven. Um, and you get the best tool in the world called the ISSMO. Again, on our site. Um, to, so, to remove the screen. Now obviously it's been in there, it's got a lot of heat soak, it's quite warm. Remember again what I said is you, you know you don't really need to remove that dot connector if you're removing the screen. You just get to this level plus the dot connector in there. Um, all the screws are off. You take the ISSMO and you just slip the in between the gap, make sure the screws are out and loose, and it simply just just edge it away around the top. Obviously the diesel is at the top and the bottom. Down at the bottom, I mean this tool, this ISSMO is absolutely fantastic for anything iPod or iPhone or probably more than that. Um, it's brilliant, it's flexible, it's comfortable, it's um, you know, it's thin, it's not too sharp, it's got two ends, it's got a, you know, sort of loads of different angles on it. It really is absolutely fantastic for popping open iPhone, iPhones, iPods, iPod touches, you name it. I cannot speak more highly than this tool. The ISSMO is on our site, so check it out folks. Um, you know, it's worth every penny. It's fantastic. So once you've released the, scr uh, the, the screen uh, and the glue, you have to withdraw the cables. So as you bring it out like that, you're looking at the cables come through, but they won't just pull straight out because of the angles of the connector. So you're looking at having to sort of bring it out and then tilt it round like that. And the, it's like the hook, the, the connectors sort of hook in and hook out like that way. So now there you go. You've, we've separated the screen there, the two of these bits at the top and the bottom. And you're left with the chassis and the home button that's that normally when you take the screen out and you leave the dock connector in the home button will sit just nicely in place there. Um, so there you go, there's the, there's the iPhone 4 chassis with there. We can remove the home button cable, might as well, it's just flopping around now. 
Okay, there we go, just goes through the slot and then twists and just sits in there nicely. Um, and obviously, if you're removing the cable as well, that comes away from the button if you're replacing that home button. We've seen quite a few home buttons go, go awry and um, you can get a new cable off our site. Job done, the screen will go straight back on. We're using the ISSMO and the, and the nice amount of heat, um, not overheating it too much. Um, nice amount of heat, it, it all comes away and you can put that screen back on. You can even use the same adhesive um, and you know, not a problem. So, that's the chassis, take, take the glove off now. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the FaceTime camera, the camera at the front. Again, you don't need the screen off to do this. Uh, you probably even, don't even need sort of half the, the other cables out as well. Um, this metal bracket has four four clips in. Uh, no, sorry, three. One, two, and three. It's a case of getting the tweezers in there and just releasing the little sort of the, the little clips to enable this bracket to just lift up and, and ping out. Uh, they're quite tricky to get into, but it's a case of once once you're under there, you, you um, you're looking at just pinging it to the side, see if you can get it to lift out. There we go, there's one. Should be one this side, there is, and then one on the other side. Lift that little metal bracket out, and then that little camera literally just lifts up like so. There's the FaceTime camera already out. Next thing we can do is obviously the, the headphone jack. Um, and the headphone jack is on the same cable as the uh, as the volume buttons. If you can see there, that connector there goes the volume buttons down here, the mute button, and the headphone jack. So we're going to first of all we're going to come here, we're going to peel this little sticker up and out of the way. Um, it does stick to the cable, so just be very careful as you do that. There we go. You can move that sticker out of the way. And it's a case of this, there's three screws, pretty much like the sort of the 3G, 3GS, very similar in design. I'm going to drop these screws in one tub. One there, one in the middle. There we go. And the third one at the top. So see there's three on that's that holds the volume button buttons down like a big bracket. Those three out. And then you've got the two you've got two screws for the, the mute button bracket there as well. So we're gonna get a little the little Phillips in there. Quite tricky. There you go. And then that the last one in there. That will release all the buttons then. Quite tricky and quite hard going with this on any screwdriver, I'd say. Not the easiest. It's always the last screw that is a difficult one, anyway, isn't it? Just when you think it's going well. There we go, that's that screw out there. Now, we've got the tweezers going on here. So the volume bracket lifts off. Obviously the cable is, is stuck down as well, so it's a case of just peeling, peeling it off gently. Um, and then headphone jack should lift out as well as we go. There you go, that lifts off. And as you go, it's a case of headphone jack off. All comes off one, there even pings off. There's the uh, there's the little mute button bracket there. I'll put that up there with the two screws. Headphone jacket comes away, and in this case, maybe even your finger, because you get to feel how hard you're pulling then. And you just you just sort of peeling the ribbon cable off of the off the chassis. it has got that little sort of the self the adhesive there. And then the mute button comes down. It's full of bracketry. And then you're peeling the sticker off, and there you go. You have the headphone jack and mute button and volume button assembly comes out. All in one go. And there's the mute button out there, and it's the volume buttons come out that way as well. Very fiddly. Last but not least, we have the head, uh, not the headphone jack, the um, sensitization cable, and the power button. So we've got the power button there, 
and you've got the earpiece as well. So if your earpiece isn't working, now you can either remove this whole cable um, because the earpiece, all, all the earpiece is, is sat glued to it, to the slot there. Um, it, it's not actually connected to the cable itself. It is literally just you just sit down and it adhesive down. So you can peel that off without removing any of any of the sort of the other cables. Once you lift the board out, you can get in there and it will come out and you can get a new one. It's got a little peel off tab and the, it shows off the adhesive around like a foam cup, like a and you just sort of you just drop it on and it sits there. So you don't need to remove this cable for the earphone, um, the earpiece repair. Now what we do is in here you've got two screws at the bottom here, two cross head screws. We're running out of places to put the screws now, there's so many in there. Um, and this will this will remove this little plastic black bracket on there. Plastic bracket that holds the power button down. I mean the engineering that goes into these are things are phenomenal. Really is the machining, the everything is, is just incredible. Um, so that this plastic bracket will lift up. And that'll allow the home, you know, the sort of power button to come out. There we go. Drop. Now this little cable, again, it's, it's stuck down a little bit. We can use a little bit of adhesive. And one thing that the ISS becomes handy is just separating. And last thing, but not least, is stuck down is the little, you know, the little hole there, the little voice cancelling one, the noise cancelling one. Um, it's a case of just just unsticking that. from the phone and then maybe just lifting it up gently there you go. well that's come away from that cable obviously easy to do but that's that's torn off that so I need to replace that anyway but that's no big deal um, again all the parts everything all the cables are on our website so there you go complete disassembly of the iPhone 4 in its entirety I must admit it, was, it seems a lot harder than the 3G 3GS there's so many sort of little nooks and crannies but to be honest the screen looks difficult and looks a bit scary but once you've done a few they're, they're dead easy um, and I think the, the screens aren't easy in 3GS but it's so much neater I mean it, this whole thing is so well engineered it's lovely so there you go there's the, uh, the iPhone 4 disassembled so we've got the stripped iPhone 4 and now we're looking to rebuild it. So obviously it's completely stripped. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go for all the uh, put all the buttons back in. So obviously put the volume button back in there, the little plate, make sure it's the right way around. We don't want the plus and the minus mixed up. Um, so that sits in that place there. And we'll also go for the mute button uh, while it's down. So that goes in there as well. Again, incredibly well engineered. Um, fantastic little everything's metal it's it's all really nicely done so we've got those in there and we're looking to get the cable for the headphone jack so are you I mean this is the fiddly bit and it always was the fiddly bit on the uh, on the 3G and the 3GS as well lots of little screws lots of little brackets we'll go for the volume button first see that little bracket in there um, the only sort of saving grace on this one against the others is that there's a little bit more sort of room to play with in here. Right. Sit that in there and use those. Three crosshead screws up there, in there. I believe they look like they're all the same length. Again, really fiddly, helps having a little magnetic screwdriver. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put each one in just a couple of threads, but not fully tightened uh, until they're all in, just to get the sort of the, just to get them all in the right place. One there, and the third one. Again, obviously. I know we've got the screen off, we've got it fully disassembled, but if you want to replace these cables at the top, you don't have to do it. You don't have to completely strip the screen out and everything to get to these. Um, you know, just take it as far as you need. But I, the only reason we've done it is obviously just to show you the full disassembly and reassembly. So that's those three screws in just to actuate the buttons. Yep, the buttons feel good. Um, then we're going to bring over the new button, which has fallen out. So we need to put that back in and get it the right way around. Orange bit at the top. 
and then the bracket for that. Now obviously you've got loads of metal metal work here. So push that in, in position. It doesn't really locate on anything, but obviously what you need to do, you need to make sure that the switch is in the right place according to the button, depending on where that is, because last thing you want to screw it up and for it to, to sort of not be in the right location. Because it will never work. Right. I believe that was in its mute position. And then that little headphone jet's kind of sparring against this there. Right, and there's this bracket that covers everything as well. This is the most fiddly bit in the world. Right, just sit that in place and then we're going to put the screws in on top. Again, magnetic screwdriver, you can get all the tools, everything you need from our website, from the tool section. So anything and everything and it always helps to have them magnetised. Right, we've got the buttons in. Um, no magic, just uh, obviously I wasn't going to have you hanging around while I did that. Just literally a lot of perseverance, a lot of patience getting all those in. Um, yeah, so I decided to uh, sort of leave me to it. Right, so you've got the uh, three screws in there for the volume button, two in for the mute button. It's a case of getting it in the right position and then getting that little bit of bracket and a little bit of patience. Um, and then once you've done that, get the buttons. Make sure you test them, they feel positive, they click nicely, and that button works okay. So you quite most likely you've got them all in the right place and they're all good. So, next thing you have the headphone jack and uh, it just locates, there's a little, little sort of locating lug that goes in there. We're going to just sit that down, pushes in there, locates on that little sort of circular, there's two sort of screw threads on there and then the cable sits down there. One thing you do have is this cable, it will find its own, uh, that pushes down, it's got a little bit of sticky and it finds its own way home. Now the next thing, obviously we'll put this little bit of a, it's got a bit of an adhesive sticker that sticks on the back of these buttons as well. So I guess it's so that it just sits them down and uh, we can put that back there. Right, so that's volume cable in. Um, obviously as you go, again a reminder, as you put new cables in that we supply, they often come with the little sticky tabs or little protectors on. Make sure you peel all the sticky to, stickies off to make sure that the all the adhesives is it's sort of shown so that it can be stuck down wherever it needs to. Right, now it's time to install the uh, the power button with the little flex cable. Now, as you uh, as we're replacing this because the other one broke, we just got to remember that all the uh, all the clear plastic, all the cables tend to come with little clear plastic um, uh, sort of glue covers on. So it's just a case of removing all the glue covers so it just so all the cables sit down properly and also obviously you, you salvage the bracket the bracket tree from the old cable um, because they don't come on the, the cables just come with the flex cable so all the bracket tree you need to salvage um, and again just just be careful look how you're taking the other one apart as and then rebuild this one to suit and do it stage by stage um, so you don't kind of you don't lose your way so we're going to pop that in there and again as you in all the stickies this button you know, there's little holes. If you look, there's guidance on how they go. The little holes that this little cable located on. There's only, you know, sort of one way it could have really gone. Um, so, obviously, before we do that, we need a little home button in there. Power button, sorry. So we slide the power button in there. Drop that in. It's a bit fiddly. There we go. So that's in. And then we're going to slot in the cable over over that. First thing we're probably going to be able to do is just get those screws in place. <clears throat> Seems to have a long a long one that goes towards the outside of the phone itself. Just trying to get get that in place. Slide that bracket down, and then get the little short one in place. Again, you know I like to do things. I like to put the screws in loosely until they're all in, and then kind of nip them up from there. Just makes things a little bit easier if there's a little bit of 
um, a possibility to get them in, you know, get them all lined up and then then screw them up. So that's one, that one's tight. So it's the long one on the, towards the outside of the phone, short one on the inside. And then again, try the button, nice positive click. It sits where it should do, so you're quite happy with that. Then the case can then sit, sit down like that. And we're going to push the cable back to find its own home. Again, it's uh, it's going to find its own way. It's a sensation, sensitization cable on this as well. It detects the little sensor there, those two little sensors. They detect your face as you put the phone up to towards your head. So they go through those holes. The adhesive on the back of this cable, we've, we've peeled the cover off it and it sits down nicely. The little gap through the middle there, that's for the ear, uh, the earpiece speaker and obviously I'll, I'll show you how to put, fit a new earpiece in there as well. Um, if you just take it out without damaging the cable like, like I didn't do, then the earpiece would already be stuck there. Uh, second thing is push that little sort of um, noise cancelling microphone, just pushes down in there and that, that lines up with that hole there. Finally, the, the cable pushes into that corner and sits up ready for the board to drop in um, and there we go and that is the uh, sensitization sort of power button cable all in place right next one we have what we're we going to fit next we're going to try the camera so we're going to try the front facing camera the FaceTime camera and that's the third cable of this array so it just sits in place um, in that hole there. Uh, good thing about these is obviously as you're fitting them, you know, if the screen's on and you're just replacing the camera, just make sure the screen, uh, you know, just make sure that the actual camera itself is just free from dust as you put it in. There's nothing worse than than dust in there. And we're going to get this little bracket that holds the camera down. Um, obviously, you've just got to get the orientation right, and that, that all has to do with where the clips sit. There, so there's one clip, one clip above it, one clip below it, and one to the top right. Um, quite fiddly, there's not a lot to hold on to here. Um, nice nice little design though. If I can get a purchase on it. So that clips over the camera and should sit in place and then just hold the camera down. Uh, obviously the you know when the screen's on, there we go. So that just pushes down those three clips kind of sit home nicely and there it is it's home. So that's the third cable in that in that array. So you've got your three cables sat there. It's quite nicely. Um, obviously, with the screen, it's got a little a little clear, clear sort of receptacle that the camera sits in, and it kind of keeps its orientation there. Um, another addition to, or the next thing we need to do is put the little earpiece speaker in. So we can do that. Um, obviously, we've replaced the earpiece speaker. Now, if you're replacing the earpiece speaker, you can you can pretty much strip the board to this level, um, and then peel the speaker off here. Now obviously the earpiece is just has this foam edging here and a little bit of sort of adhesive around this foam edging. Um, all it's a case of just plying it off you'll just tear the foam. Then you can pick the foam off of there and you're ready to put the new one in. Um, there's no specific way this locates. Um, it just kind of sits in, in one place. The, again the contacts on the board pick up these contacts. It doesn't really matter which way around they go but we have the, the the prongs pointing from the top of the phone up to the middle of the phone, um, so they're, they're coming up like that. So we're gonna we're gonna sit it in there, and it kind of locates in there quite nicely. Um, but yeah, there's no there's no sort of hard and fast place. It just kind of butts up against the camera, butts up against this little metal bracket here, and, and sits squarely in there. So there, there's the microphone. Uh, there's the earpiece replaced. Next thing, we're going to a little little plastic block um, sits in here as well, and that just sits above the camera. Probably helps to locate it and covers up the little chipsets that's in there, like so. Right, so th there's the earpiece. Next thing we're going to look at is the dock, ne dock connector. We're going to put the dock connector in. Again, as I'm saying, sort of on the, all the new cables you get, they tend to have the clear plastic 
um, covering of all the sort of sensitive the areas with the glue and everything. So just make sure all those clear plastic bits are, are taken off um, so that it all sticks down in, in situ. Um, obviously, we've used this cable before. Um, a lot of a lot of the positions of the cable they've, they've hints to us where they bend, dotted lines or you know sort of fold here. Be gentle with them, but they you know they they're quite robust cables. It's a case of we're going to sit the dot connector in there. It finds its own way with the, with the radius of the cables, you know, and how it all sits. It just kind of finds its own way home. And the next, all the only thing we need to do is locate those two holes for the two screw threads. So hopefully we've got the two screws down here. There we go, two duty screws. Um, and they go either side of the dot connector. So we can put in one at a time in there. Again, put it in loosely. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so it's just just uh, you know scan the new parts that you got just for sort of clear layers of of plastic. I know um, you know some people write in and say that you know on some of the guides where you're replacing things like the the rear of the iPhone 4, you're not saying that there's a a, a clear protector on the back as well as the front. Well, uh, sorry about that, guys, but obviously just keep be aware. Sometimes sometimes um, you can't even see the the clear protectors on screens and on glass and on lenses. It's so well put on. Um, it doesn't even look like there is one on there, but well, it's always worth um, not getting anything metal to it, but getting a little plastic tool and digging at it. And if you can mark it, it's not glass; it's going to be a plastic cover. Um, so if that's the case, then just pull it off, uh, and you'll probably find that it's a clear protective layer. So there's the dot connector in, uh, and that that's that cable sat there ready for the board to go in. Um, yeah, all we've done is put the two screws in, and uh, the little microphone. Next thing we're going to do is put the uh, we're going to put the home button in. Now what happens is that comes through the front, so if you're ever doing a home button repair you need to remove the screen. Um, but it's no big deal, I mean if you follow this guide you can do it and replace the screen without, without sort of damage. So it goes through the slot like that, turns around, home button just sits there and then you've got the cable come through roughly in the, in the position where it's got to be. This gets quite tricky, it's a case of you having to pull up, up the connector and, and push it in. Now always make sure before I do that, make sure that there's that little catch is flicked up and loose on that home button uh, connector just to make sure that it accepts it, otherwise you'll be pushing it, pushing it and pushing it, you'll just damage the connector um, or the cable. So make sure that's up, and I mean it's difficult enough as it is. There you go. It finds its own sort of, only way, only way, only way it'll go in, all the way up to as far as it's going to go, and then just push that clip down. I'm using the end of the tweezers to push that down. I'm being extremely gentle. You could use your thumb just to feel your way down. Just don't force these little clips. Don't push them all the way that way. Try and push it down because otherwise if you push it that way, you'll break the bar off and yeah, world of pain. So that's the uh, that's the home button in place. There we go. Make sure it's nice and makes a nice clicking sound, um, which it does. And it's all in position there. Right, next thing we're going to do is we are going to fit the, the loudspeaker with the aerial assembly. So you've got the aerial sticker here with the cable coming off and these little tabs and that's the loudspeaker itself. Now we're going to, this slots in, slots into here. Nice and simple, straight down. The only thing to watch out for is, as you do this, get the, uh, get the old Isesimo and you're looking for these four little spring tabs to you pushing them in so you can push the speaker down. If you if you push them now, those tabs will bend up and they'll snap off. And they they sort of they create the aerial connection between that and the and the uh, the uh, chassis itself. So it's a case of pushing it down one by one, just trying to push them in. There we go. Clip them in, and then you'll feel that the loudspeaker will push all the way in. Then a nice firm home. Keep your thumb on it so that it doesn't spring out and these these clips don't spring out. And we're just going to put the uh, the side screw in. So that screw there just goes in that side and it just kind of holds it down stops it from going anywhere that's the only screw you can put in and now until the board goes in but that that holds it in place holds those clips in place um, nice little tip is just to keep that cable back because as you put the board in if it's if it's around here it's going to be it's going to be sucked under um, right next thing we're going to look at is the screen now this adhesive is still good I mean it hasn't it hasn't got any sort of glass debris on um, so we're going to reuse that debris. Uh, re reuse that debris. We're going to reuse that adhesive. Um, but otherwise, you can peel that adhesive off, and we get the new pre-cut adhesive that we get from our website. And it's simple enough. It's all shaped properly. There's only one way it can go: stick it on, peel it off. 
Now, what I'd recommend is heating this up with a little bit of a hair gun, a uh, hot air gun, hair dryer, a little small oven at a low temperature, just to warm the adhesive to accept the screen. Um, so this is this is, um, you know, ready to accept the screen now. So we're looking at make sure it's all, you know, there's no dust on the back of the phone, um, and it's all good to accept. I'm using I'm reusing the screen, which you can do. Um, obviously, if your screen's broken, you're looking to use another one. Just make sure that the camera lenses are clean, the camera the camera's clean, free from dust, and the home button is in situ. Uh, is in situ. Now, obviously, this follows on from my my top tip about these spaces, and I'll show you that in a minute. But we're going to do the screen. The screen can't just slot straight in. It's got to hook around that connector through that gap. It goes in, and then you're looking to hook the screen around, so you're in that position there. Now, there's a big big tip on this one. And that is, as you get it all in situ and all, all ready to go in, don't just squish them together and hope for the best. Because, see that cable there, if I can point that cable out there, that the little dog leg will get stuck between the screen and the chassis and you'll pinch it. If you pinch it too much, it will tear the cable, it will break all the contacts and your, your screen's US. So make sure, gently gently pull the two cables through, pull the dis and you look into pull the whole cable through all the time looking to make sure it all comes through this side and there's nothing nothing left in that gap there. So you, you pull the cable through and it's, it's, you've got to have a million eyes and a million different places. Um, obviously top tip here, and if you're struggling, undo them. But obviously I didn't undo these six washers and screw sets because um, you know it just it slows things down. But if you feel uncomfortable doing this, because this is the difficult bit, you're looking to slide the screen together and you've got to keep your eye on all these washers to make sure that all of the little the clips of the screen come up and the washer is on this face and doesn't get stuck behind it. So all the time you're looking to make sure that all the washers are inboard to the phone. Um, if need be, just undo them a little bit more to give you a bit more space. Uh, and if you really can't get on with it, I mean the assessment really comes in handy because of the thin edge. Um, it's just a case of backing off the screen a little bit with your finger, letting it drop away, pulling the washer and then pushing it back up again. I don't know if you can see that, but you just you're just looking to have the tabs that you know, phone side of the washer, so the screw washer clip phone on all of them. So you do one side, you come around the other, literally just letting it rest on your finger, and we're going to do the other side. Um, obviously, this side it's not gone down so well, so you can keep this side in while lifting this away. In this case, of just leaving the washers out a little bit, making sure they're they're in board. And there we go. They're all, all the clips are in there. Last thing to worry about is obviously we know that this cable's through. Quick last paranoia check to make sure all that cable's through, nothing's caught back. Um, and then the home button to make sure that's in, in position. Um, there we go. And it's a case of pushing the screen down. You can check all the way around there to make sure there's no gaps and there shouldn't be any gaps. If that's the case, keep your finger down on everything, push down on all the corners and as you do it, just nip these little screws and imagine you know you're trying to get the washers in doing this is so difficult there we go putting quite a bit of pressure down on the screen just so it nips all those up and then the same down this side there we go and that's that's the six screws i've i've actually um bit of a shortfall there i put this loudspeaker in far too early because i need to take it out because obviously I need to get to these two corners for the screws for the screen. So there we go. Right, so last thing to do is check all the way around, make sure there's no gaps, screen's okay, home button clicks, no dust behind the camera, great. Next thing we can do is just put those four corner screws in. And there they are down there. So that is, that's the screen replacement and obviously you know, if you're just doing the screen, then you can leave everything else in situ. You don't need to remove the dock connector. You don't need to remove the headphone jack and cable assemblies, nor the earpiece, nor anything like that. Um, yeah, it's just a case of removing the board, the loudspeaker, um, the battery, of course. And um, yeah, and that will that'll come off. Um, you know, when you're heating the screen, we tend to just put the whole thing um, in our small sort of temperature controlled electronics oven around about 60 degrees for half an hour just let enough to let it heat soak properly and then the screen comes away no problem um, if you haven't got sort of temperature controlled oven just use a hair dryer um, you know you don't have to be ridiculous about the heat levels just keep it on there and be patient the more the longer you keep it on there for a moderate heat 
um, the more it will soak through the glass and the metal and, and, and free up the adhesive. Um, the temptation is to blast it with as much heat as you can um, and it will just end up melting stuff and it won't soak through and it will go cold before it gets to the adhesive. Um, and you, you don't get anything then, you might as well not bother. Um, you know, all tools, all the adhesive sets, all the parts, everything can be uh, found on our website so you've got no problems there. So there's the four so-called corner screws in. Now, we can of course refit the speaker. Um, same before, same as before, we're going to just little push down these contacts one at a time until you f it goes all the way home. Put that little screw in again. So uh, even the pros make the odd, uh, the odd mistake. There we go, that's that screw in. So we have the screen on. It's fully secured down. We've got all the button cables back together. We've got the loudspeaker assembly um, and we're ready for the board. So we make sure that that cable's out of the way for the board. Everything's pushed down there and in, in comes the main board. Again, what I, uh, the thing I said earlier was make that sure that little rubber space is in place, um, pushed up against that corner with the flat on the inside. We're going to First thing we're going to come in from the top down there, but it's quite tricky, it's quite fiddly. So we're going to pull these cables out of the way there, push those LCD cables out of the way, and we're going to come in for this end from the board into here. It's like a little cutout that it sits in. Not only that, but this, this edge here is a cutout that it slides into in there. Um, and of course, the board then sits down. Um, also, as you do that, as you get stuck in there, You've got a tiny little, this little bracket on the board here that's stopping the board from sitting down. So it's a case of gently getting something in just to tweak that, that out of the way. Making sure all the connectors are out of the way. Um, you know, you, you just need your eyes in a million and one different places. Once again, like I say, with every guide we do, is uh, if you've got a faucet, then there's something wrong. Um, you know, if it's not sitting down properly, then yeah, you, you've got something that, that's, that's awry. So just take it out, have a look, try again. If it really isn't happening, then uh, you know, sort of go and have a cup of tea, cup of coffee, take a short break, uh, deep breath. Don't force it, because if you force it and you break it, then you might as well throw it all in the bin. It's trying to find that slot at the top. There we go. So that's this, that went into that slot there. It's clear of that bracket and these cables. It's underneath this little bit here, which we need to be, and it's sitting down nicely. And obviously, you know, in in what we've done, this is this all these clips have sprung up again. So it's a case of just just getting something in there just to push those clips down again, push that speaker in. So there's the board. It doesn't feel springy. Um, if it feels springy, there's normally something behind it and you need to sort of take it all out and try again. So there's the board home. We're going to put a little screw in that corner now to stop this from all popping up again. Right, there's that, that screw there. It's got a quite a, a large head on it and that covers the speaker and the board. Right, there we go. So that's the main board in. We're quite happy that uh, we're seeing all the, all, the, all the boards in place underneath all the tags. That's great. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to start plugging in all these cables again. Um, you know, if you're just doing the screen, these all sit in perfectly. That you know, they pretty much find their own way home. Um, but we've had them out, so it's a bit more fiddly. But still, we know where they go. It's a case of fitting them um, and making sure they're all they're all home and they're all tight. So you. Bit of pressure on each one, and uh, yeah, perfect. So there's the three three uh, little cables there. Next one is the LCD. So we're going to gently bend that over. It's quite stiff cable, and it might need a little bit of a press in that corner along those that dotted line. Otherwise, it could spring back up again. So nice little press there. Run your thumbnail just over that gently, just to create that radius. And then the last thing, the digitizer comes on over. Now you can put the camera in before the cables go down or not. I mean, this shows you the other way of how of doing it with the cables in, just to prove you can do the camera without removing the screen connectors on. So you've got the camera. It's got that little that little leg out onto the side. That will just slide in there 
underneath the cables gently and then it sits in in that little sort of cavity there and then again the connector just finds its own way gently touch thinking okay yeah it's found it and then just a little bit of a press down and you get that firm connector click so there's the camera in as well um, once we've got all that in place we can start thinking about the other the other parts to the uh, the phone and just finally buttoning it up right we're on the home stretch now the iPhone 4 is coming together we're looking at putting all the screws and the far, you know, sort of the last the last final parts in um, now next thing we can do we can put this cover in that covers all these connectors to make sure they stay home um, but first things first we've got that little castellated screw at the top that can go in so that goes into that corner there that holds the top left of the board in and the headphone jack in place and and just uh, just holds it all together and of course that gives us the screw thread for the, the top bracket to go through now the top bracket obviously as I was saying before um, you know some people just say it's a, a bracket to hold it down some other people say it's the Wi-Fi connector and you know it's the old Wi-Fi aerial I actually think that it uh, it is the old Wi-Fi aerial um, just by the what, what it you know the little contacts it touches so as we go on with that the, the only thing to worry about is these two pieces here um, they clip in there and there so you want to come in from that way and then push it down oh, we're, we're happy all the connectors are all in place so it's a case of pushing it down then in, in at the top and there it sits home those two little clips are in there one long screw in the top middle obviously with my guides they're quite lengthy I try not to cut so that you see all the ins and outs of it um, you know, I don't use a phone that just falls apart in your hands. That you know, it's been apart a million times. Um, this has been apart, but not down to that level. So, you know, you see it real time, really. All it takes is patience and, and being a little a bit aware of where it all comes apart. You you need to get a bit of a tool log organizer. Um, nice little work surface, bit of light and you must you know you've got to try and keep the tabs on where all your screws are coming and going um, because they're so 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 many different sizes let me put this down it might be a bit easier S you know so many different screws of different sizes that you really need to sort of keep a tab on on where all they're all going and where they all go to um, what you don't want to be doing is putting sort of too long of screws in too short of holes and they end up punching through the board um, obviously you guys haven't got a camera above you uh, in your face so you can see what you're doing all I say is you know if, if you're finding like you're getting frustrated with it you can't do something um, it's best to, to stop leave it you know ship it back to ship it into us ship it to uh, you know a repair site so give us a call up we can advise you um, rather than break it uh, you know you guys have made a, a great gallant attempt to actually to get it as far as you have um, you know you're part of the minority Part of the minority that will give it a go anyway and you know if you don't try you don't learn anything and um, yeah so you know all else fails to get it into us um, but you know you know have the confidence give it a go we've got all the parts on our sites you've got all the tools you've got all the help you need on our phone numbers um, you know our, our guys our engineers would, would advise you happily um, and uh, yeah so and commend you on on being sort of brave enough to, to want to do it yourself it's all about learning. Every day is a school day. Right, so the little vibration uh, module, there's me rambling on. Vibration module drops in that top right corner. And uh, like I was saying before, get the two screws in place, sit it down, and make sure it's, it's, it's in the middle of its orientation before you nip it up. Uh, the only reason I say that is because if it's, if, it's, if it's tipped to one side, you can get that little rotating head, sometimes hits against there, and, and it just won't vibrate, it won't do anything. Um, so we've got the Wi-Fi cable in there, all the different screws, um, the little vibration module. Uh, next thing down this bottom corner is we're going to put the aerial connector. Now the aerial connector again finds its own way roughly, um, roughly where it is or where it was. But if you're replacing it, it might not have the right the bend in the right place. But this one in probably requires requires the most patience. Um, I will make it look easy, but I promise you it's not. Whatever you do, do not force it home. Because if you do, it's such a so such a delicate connector that you can pin the edge over on on the either part, and it just again, like I say it a lot, but world of pain. Um, need a little bit of a kink in that connector, make it a little bit shorter, and sit it on there. 
and again I don't want to cut from this because I want to show you real time what it takes but these connectors can be sometimes a little bit perilous um, yeah so there you go it's on gave me a nice little firm click and that's your aerial connector so if, if that goes wrong you can't get that on you'll get no service um, which nullifies the fact that why well, you need a phone so that's in there next thing we do we're going to put this connector on now my advice for this connector is don't it's got adhesive all the way under here don't stick it down until you get the connector on so put the connector on first find its home nice little click there as you heard and then press from top to bottom down to the cable and it finds its own way in there perfect um, it's got a little retention bracket on there to stop it from pinging off if you kick your phone around or anything um, this will only go one way like so two different size screws um, you've got a, a tiny beveled screw that sits on the outside there it is just there I mean again the engineering that goes into these phones and these frames are just incredible put it in loosely um, get the bigger screw that goes on inboard sits in there and then just nip them both up there we go nice firm press on there to make sure it's all him uh, one of the last screws to go in is this one here and that's in the side of the board I kept that nice and separate um, and as you'll find on, on your iPhone that'll have a little white dot above it a little sort of liquid dot that um, that you can replace in fact I've got it down there red on one side, white on the other and obviously if it gets wet it's like litmus paper um, the white just turns red and they know that your iPhone's got a bit damp um, you know it's not necessary but I'll put that back on there just to show where it goes there we go, push it down there you have it so we're nearly there now um, last few screws, the SIM dock can obviously be replaced back in there simply slides in, clicks in uh, the battery adhesive strip, as we said earlier, it's easy to take that off instead of have it flapping while you're trying to repair it. Just sits it in and then you just push it down either end there on its adhesive. For last but not least, and this is the, the one thing that most people get wrong, is this little retaining clip there um, has to go in before the battery. A lot of put, people put it in after the battery, it goes in first and it sits in and what it is, the little, uh, the little rubber blob sits above the aerial and the, uh, the aerial plug to hold it down because if that pings off you lose service so that goes in there hold that down with your finger get the battery connector and then come in with your thumb locate it push it down with a nice little click put the screw in you can let go now put the screw in place there we go down on the battery and then you can just literally push the battery in, the, the cable folds and drops down, cuts up, comes down and comes back up again, takes the slack off, and then the battery sits in there nicely with that tab. Uh, last thing, last but not least, obviously we've got our rear casing, it's just worth giving it a rub. And like I said, when you repair these, when you fit your new casings or your new covers, your new screens, always check on the uh, sort of the, the back and the front for any any clear. They'll always, they'll, you know, they'll tend to be a clear patch over there to stop you you know like a dust free cover on the back of the lens as well as the front of the lens um, and there'll probably be a clear cover that goes over this little graphite um, strip as well okay peel all that off um, as well as obviously on the on the other side but yeah the final thing is just to give it a wipe make sure there's no dust in the camera lens uh, give it a blowout and um, yeah so the rear the rear cover goes in pretty much where it, it sets off with a two inch gap or two, two inch two millimeter gap there um, it sits down you can see it's flush and it's sat into the phone and then all you do is just you just push it down push push it down put down downward force there and then slide it back and what you'll see then is that the uh, the rear casings actually slid down towards the phone uh, last but not least obviously the two screws in the bottom um, and we can put those in Phillips or Torx depending on, on what sort of screws you've got uh, one last thing I'll see as you change the screen just remember there's a, there's a, a clear um, sometimes coloured back in on the back of the screen as well before you put them in um, so remember to take that off because there's not enough space for that clear protector and you end up with a marked screen on the back um, but yeah just just be aware and uh, yeah so you have it so once we built, rebuilt the iPhone 4 um, I don't know if it, the, uh, give it a bit of a clean 
and there we have it obviously powered it up but uh, the battery's it's got no juice in it typical but uh, yeah so we have a sort of fully disassembled and reassembled iPhone 4 all the buttons work um, yeah there we go remember uh, thanks for watching my guide have a good listen to it um, it's too late now you probably already have but uh, yeah take heed take uh, all the little bits of knowledge that other people don't tell you that I've dropped in there um, and also all the tools things like the ice SMO tools the all the screwdriver sets the tweezers um, you know all available on our site uh, you know you can't beat these tools and the, the ice SMO is just one of the best so yeah all, all the tools all the parts all of the knowledge and all the help on our websites I'm Neil Barker and uh, thanks for watching this rather lengthy iPhone 4 uh, repair guide